This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Uh, just a couple of things I wanted to emphasize about uh, the announcements that scroll through. The, the one big one is that uh, next Wednesday, if you're available, was it 10 o'clock, Phyllis? 10 o'clock on, on Wednesday morning, we're going to come back in and put back pew cushions and hymnals and Bibles in the pews uh, for the places you're sitting. We won't put them on everywhere because we're still going to keep you socially distanced. We still want you to wear masks when you're in the, in the church. But we are going we are to bring those things and put them back in, put them back in, and uh, uh, that means that all of this is going to be gone. That's going to be gone. Now uh, you have a bullet in your hand. That's not good. <laughs> I'm having trouble with technology this morning. But, uh, uh, yeah, those, now it sounds louder than it did. Anyway, uh, that, that's, that's kind of the big thing going to happen. And, and we're trying to take a step forward and bring us back to more of what we have been used to. Uh, but still recognizing that there are some, you know, for, 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 our, for our common good, let me put it that way, because that's what all of this is about anyway, is for the common good. It's not to make things better for me or for you or anybody else. It's for the common good. We're still going to maintain the distances and, and do all the other things that we've been doing. We're just going to add back uh, some things that we think uh, we won't have any problems with. We won't have any problems with doing those things. So that's what's going on. The other thing I wanted to announce, uh, said, want everybody before you go to say happy birthday to Rosalind. Uh, her birthday is tomorrow. Um, I have to write that down now. Yes. Are there any other announcements or concerns today? You kind of like, you know, I kind of think when we got going to, uh, uh, you know, we stand up to sing the hymns and stuff like that. There's no reason. Why don't we all stand up and everybody over here, you know, turn and wave to the people. Stand up, stand up. And turn and wave to the people on the other side of the room and say, the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. everybody here. Wave and say, and also with you. And also with you. And now say, the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And over here, say, and also with you. That's the close we're going to get for a while, folks. Please be seated. <laughs> continue our worship with our opening responsive call to worship. God listens to us in our distress and answers us when we call. God is gracious to us and he hears our prayers. We shall always put our trust in you, O God. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for restoring to life your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through his great love, our wounds are healed, and mercy is experienced as lives are transformed in his resurrected life and power. His victory over sin and death gives us the confidence to move from sorrow to joy, from mourning to dancing. We praise you and adore you, O God, for your graciousness toward us. To you and to our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ be all blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Amen. Our first hymn is the Day of Resurrection. And if you'd like to stand, you're welcome.
when the Apostle Peter said that he would lay down his life for Jesus, he was probably sure he could carry out that promise. When the time of his testing arrived, however, he failed to live up to that promise. There are times in our lives when we make promises also, believing that we can and will keep them. We must also acknowledge that we fail at times. Let us confess our sins to God. Let us pray together. Merciful God, we hear the stories of the disciples and marvel at the transformation that occurred in their lives. Forgive us when our attitudes reflect more of the disciples of Good Friday than the disciples of Easter and Pentecost. The disciples show that surprising things happen when faith is put to the test. Forgive us if we don't expect surprises to happen in relation to faith. The disciples' stories show that any guilty memories have been transcended by their relationship with the resurrected reality of Jesus. Forgive us if we find it difficult to move beyond any feelings of guilt to the forgiveness offered by the risen Christ. Lord Jesus, you told your disciples that repentance and forgiveness of sins were to be proclaimed in your name, beginning right there with them. Help us to remember that you have given us the same message. Amen. Children of God, the gospel has not offered you more anxiety or shame, but grace and peace and joy. Accept the gift of God and live with the freedom and resilience of those who are destined for the highest service. In Jesus Christ, you and I are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. If you'd like to stand for the glory of God. His name itself has made this man strong, 
whom you see and know by the faith that is Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you have an inheritance, as you did also, your, as also your rulers did. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel lesson is Luke 24, verses 36 through 48 in the New Revised Standard Version. Jesus has appeared to the disciples as they walked to Amos. He has shared their bread with them. They have just returned to Jerusalem and had heard from the eleven and their companions that Jesus has also appeared to Peter. Now he appeared to them. Listen to the word of God. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones. And as you see, I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the, the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to raise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witness to all these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my father promised, to stay here in the city until you have been clothed with the power from on high. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Three Sundays after Easter, now this doesn't sound like it's working so well. Hmm. Wouldn't you know the most important part? <laughs> Not really. Anyway, three Sundays after Easter, three Sundays after Easter, maybe I just keep saying that. <laughs> Singing Easter hymns starts to sound a little bit stale. We're ready to kind of move down the road a little bit. Easter was at the beginning of the month. You know, I mean, okay, yeah, you explained this is the season of Easter and it goes on for a few weeks. But how do we go, how do we move on? How do we go forward without letting go? Yesterday, uh, just I watched some of the pageantry for Prince Philip. I don't know if any of you, if any of you watched a little bit of that, or maybe the whole thing. Uh, most of what I saw was the sort of the pageantry before. I saw all the different groups marching in. You know, they were uh, marching around and then sort of setting up someplace. And then I watched the uh, uh, the specially. Uh, fixed Land Rover with his casket on it and everybody walking behind him as they walked down, walked around the castle to 
we can see to the uh, to the church there. And it was really quite moving, you know, and then seeing the way that they do, that they did that, all of that, you know, I mean, that's much more than we do in anything like this, uh, recognizing someone's, uh, someone's death. Uh, and this morning, but this morning I saw there was a picture very, that this, suddenly it's everywhere, a picture of Queen Elizabeth sitting by herself in the pew there before the service. And I thought about this a little bit yesterday because Prince Philip, of course, was 99 years old. Uh, Queen Elizabeth is 94 now. They've been married 73 years. My wife told me that, uh, from what she understood, that they first met when she was 13 years old. And she told her dad, was it, her father, who was the king, that this is the guy I want to marry. 13 years old. That means for 86 years, she's had some kind of a connection with that man. And I can't even imagine that, not even being that old, not even being close to that old. And the same, you know, I kind of ask the same thing of, about, about Queen Elizabeth as I ask about you and I today. How do we move on? How do we go forward from here? How does someone who has, who, who, where someone has been such an important part of their life for so long, let that go, not, well, not actually not let it go, but move on from that time And the short answer, which is not an easy one by any means, but the short answer is by realizing like the disciples, like the stories we read today, that Jesus was still with them. And by reminding ourselves that Jesus is still with us. In some fashion, that's a, that's a, a, difficult, a difficult thing to do. My, so I've told you before, my sort of experience of Jesus uh, that kind of pulled me into the church and ultimately led to me becoming uh, a pastor happened sometime in my teenage years. I don't remember the exact time anymore. At one time I could have told you the exact date, day, month, and year, but at some point I decided it wasn't that important. Simply the fact was good enough. In some sense, we have to keep carrying that understanding of God with us. What does it mean to have God with us when we go through our daily lives? I think a lot of you may have better devotional habits than I do. Quite a few of you probably get up in the morning and and read uh, the daily bread or read some other devotional or maybe spend a few minutes praying. Tony Campolo used to say or would say that, that he always wakes up, I guess about a half hour, he said, before, half hour before he has to really get up. And he wakes up and during that time he thinks about God. And he thinks about his day. And he thinks about how that all works together in some fashion, how God is with him during that day. And a lot of times I wish I had that kind of, you know, I don't, get, I don't wake up and get up until it's time to wake up and get up. I can't do that. But what I did realize, and I I hate to use this, this illustration, but I kind of like it. We've told most of you that we've got a little dog. And, and when I get up, when, and he, he lays next to me until I, till I wake up. And as soon as I get up, he jumps over the top of me 
and runs around the bed waiting for me to get up and get a robe on, get slippers on, and then and, and open the door so he can get out. And there's something about that to me. It's like, here's a fresh day. Here's something brand new. Here's, you know, what are we going to do now? And, and, and I guess that's what, what we kind of need to know as well. What are we going to do now? What's next? The disciples, I can't imagine that it's any easier for the disciples than it was for us. Even having that, 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 those experiences of Jesus in their presence didn't suddenly, suddenly change everything. If you, read, if you read through each of the Gospels, read those last things, from week to week after the resurrection, they are still having some problems with this whole thing. Even when Jesus appears to them. You know, when you read John's Gospel, it says they're locked in the out there. They've closed the door. They've locked it so that because of fear of the Jews. The next week, the same thing happens. They're in a locked room again. Jesus had appeared to them, but that didn't change that for them. They were still afraid. Part of that is the experience, uh, uh, is, is taking that in experience and internalizing it for our own lives and moving ahead with it and realizing that God is with us, and that God and Jesus moves through this life with us. And I think that's a lifetime experience. I think that's a lifetime experience. I looked at that picture of Queen Elizabeth, and I thought of, of people that I know who have lost a spouse, a loved one, a parent, and they all have to get up and they all have to do something the next day and the day after and the day after and they say it's not like it all it ever goes away it just changes it's like not like the love is forgotten the love is still there it just changes a little bit the way we think of it all I said that I would and I remembered this week then I would look up a little poem, a little story that I had, because I felt that it, you know, it fits, it fits just with about anything. A man named Martin Bell, I believe he's an Episcopalian, but it doesn't say there. This is a little book called The Way of the Wolf, and it's just little short stories and poems and songs. I've never tried to sing any of them, but uh, this is one little story he has called the Ragtag Army. I'll close, I'll close with this today. I think God must be very old and very tired. Maybe he used to look splendid and fine in his, in his general's uniform, but no more. He's been on the march a long time, you know. And look at his ragtag little army. All he has for soldiers are you and me. Dumb little army. Listen. The drum beat isn't even regular. Everyone is out of step. And there, you see, God keeps stopping along the way to pick up one of his tinier soldiers who decided to wander off and play with a frog, or run in a field, or whose foot got tangled in the underbrush. He'll never get anywhere that way. And yet the march goes on. Do you see how the marchers have broken up into little groups? Look at that, that outfit near the front. Now that's a snappy outfit. They're all pretty much alike. At least they're in step with each other. That's something. Only they're not wearing their shoes. They're carrying them in their hands. Silly, silly little band. They won't get very far before God will have to stop again. And, or how about that group over there? They're all holding hands as they march. The only trouble with this is that the ones on each end of the line, pretty soon they realize that they are only holding on with one hand. And so they hold hands with each other. And everybody marches around in circles. 
The more people holding hands, the bigger the circle. And of course, a bigger circle is deceptive because as we march, it looks like we're going someplace, but we're not. And so God must stop again. You see what I mean? I'll never get anywhere that way. If God were more sensible, he'd take his little army and shape them up. Whoever heard of a soldier stopping to romp in a field? That's ridiculous. But even more absurd is a general who will stop the march of eternity to go and bring him back. But that's God for you. His is no endless, empty marching. He is going somewhere. His steps are deliberative and purposeful. He may be old and he may be tired, but he knows where he's going. And he means to take every last one of his tiny soldiers with him. Only there aren't going to be any forced marches. And after all, there are frogs and flowers and thorns and underbrush along the way. And even though our foreheads have been signed with the sign of the cross, we are only human. And most of us are afraid and lonely and would like to hold hands or cry or run away. And we don't know where we're going and we can't seem to trust God, especially when it's dark out and we can't see him. But he won't go on without us. And that's why it's taking so long. Listen, the drum isn't even regular. Everyone is out of step. And there you see, God keeps stopping along the way to pick up one of his tinier soldiers who decided to wander off and play with a frog or run in a field or whose foot got tangled in the underbrush. He'll never get anywhere that way. And yet the march goes on. Amen. Please stand and join me in reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, once more we offer ourselves to you in the intimacy of prayer. Once more we venture to submit our spirits to the permeating influence of your Holy Spirit. We know that this will make us discontented with ourselves as we are, that it will create in us a longing for a better kind of life than what we have been accustomed to live. But we trust your promise that when you have made us to long after what is good, you will satisfy our longing souls with goodness. In your presence we remember all, tho all those here and throughout the world who have special need of your grace. Be near to all, who, all those who suffer, the poor, the hungry, the sick, those enslaved by evil habits and evil men. By the glorious gospel and by the power of faith, strike off the chains that bind women's and men's souls and bodies. Let our prayers reach out also to the indifferent and the lazy, the cruel and the selfish. And when we find ourselves in that number, call us back to the way everlasting. Lord, we lift up those people who are special in our lives, those people that we pray for every day. 
for family, for friends, for all those loved ones, wherever they may be. We remember to you Lord Sarah and Loreen. We have tried, O oh God, to save our lives, to hoard our hours and our goods for ourselves, but we found the truth of the saying, whoever would save his life shall lose it. We have seen that the path of selfishness leads only to death. Now we would commit ourselves and trust to you. Help us to spend our lives with abandon in the service of Christ, who poured out his life for us. That true goodness may abound here and everywhere, in our lives and in every life. We pray this to the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. St. Paul wrote, You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. The story of the Gospels, the story of the Scriptures, is the way that God reaches out and, and touches our lives and changes them. And so we give thanks to you, and we say thank you to all of you who support this church weekly, monthly, however you do it, through your gifts, through your time and effort, through your commitment to the work of God. And we remind you that how God has promised to care for us. That by giving, we somehow receive. By reaching out to others, we sometimes get so, we somehow get something back. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Jesus, Savior and Lord, we thank you for strengthening us in faith by feeding and nourishing us with your risen life. Bless the gifts that we offer in response to your sacrificial giving of yourself for us. Bless each of our lives as, as we respond to your challenge to follow you, sharing your love and your, and your life with others. We offer these gifts in our lives and this prayer to you, O Redeemer. And together we pray as you taught your disciples, our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand now and join me in singing the doxology.
accident, wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. Wherever he has a purpose in your being there. Christ who indwells you has something he wants to do, do through you wherever you are. May God bless the world in which you move and bless your home and bless your friends. May God bless the eyes with which you see and bless the ears with which you listen. May God bless the way you use your hands, bless the way you use your tongues. As a gift from the living God, grace, mercy, and peace be yours today and always. Amen. Please be seated until you're dismissed.